Hello, everybody, and thank you for attending this Balanced Scorecard Institute webinar. Today, we're going to be joined by our friends over at Spider Strategies to discuss how dashboards can be used to bring strategy to life. I'm David Wilsey, Chief Operating Officer at the Balanced Scorecard Institute. I'm working from home today, but uh, my home is near the Balanced Scorecard Institute headquarters in Cary, North Carolina in the United States. Uh, today, I'll be joined by Tom Keating. Tom is the uh, Customer Experience and Training Consultant at, at Spider Strategies. So on the agenda today, uh, we will first talk through how to implement strategy using dashboards. I'll discuss uh, how we might, how we, why do we want to visualize performance information? Why do we want to manage strategy uh, using a tool like this? Uh, and what do we need to do to uh, create a performance ma management uh, meeting cadence? Uh, you know, a, a schedule, a, a series of meetings that will help create a discipline around strategy execution and, and, and implement, implementing your strategy. Then I'll talk a bit about some of the basic strategies for creating useful dashboards uh, and, and performance visualizations. And then finally, I'm gonna hand things off to Tom and Tom is going to do a simulation of how a coffee store might use dashboarding technology uh, to make all of this happen. All right, so let's get started with just the basic question. Why do we need to visualize performance information? Before we do that, I'm gonna turn off my camera. So managing strategy is, is, is critical because we live in a changing world. You, 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 um, as the world changes, every organization needs to revisit on a, on a regular basis, what is their strategy for, for, uh, um, for, for success, maintaining success within that changing world. Uh, and, and I know a lot of you watch a lot of our, our, our webinars. I see a lot of our friends on the list uh, that you come back to uh, come back to our webinars on a regular basis. And so you probably heard me tell this story last year about how um, did you realize, you know, the, the message for 2019 was, did you realize that the, that the market value for Airbnb is now worth more than Hilton and Hyatt combined? You know, and the message in 2019 was, wow, if you're Hilton and Hyatt, you'd better be, you'd better be on your game because you're, because you, you know, in, in order to keep up with this changing world, you have to adapt. Well, I just checked in on this, you know, because in, in 2020, you know, the message for all of us is, uh, you know, that, that the COVID-19 situation has changed all of our worlds. And, you know, even Airbnb, who was the, uh, you know, the, the disruption in 2019 is laying off people. Uh, but you'll notice that the, the message is the same, right? The, the, the message being that if you want to be successful as an organization, you have to be, uh, you have to main, maintain that constant um, uh, redesign of your strategy in order to be successful. Make sure that you're keeping up with a changing world and you're adapting and you're implementing strategies and you're, and you're communicating and managing those strategies in a disciplined manner. Another thing that's happening today is that we are all experiencing information overload. You know, I'm, I'm embarrassed by the number of times per day that I am distracted by the most trivial of notifications on my phone, for instance. Uh, you know, I, 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 a news alert comes in and I pick up my phone and 45 minutes later, I realize that <laughs> that time is just gone because I got distracted by one thing or another. Uh, you know, I, at the organization level, organizations are counting everything everything they can, um, you know, but if you ever try to filter through the mounds of data on, you know, maybe Google Analytics or, you know, on any social media account on the marketing side or, or maybe on the operational side, you know, that, that avalanche of operational data of all the things that we could count. Uh, if you ever do that, one, the, the question that always comes to mind for me, and I'm guessing for you as well, is, is any of this meaningful or are we just counting everything we can just because we can? So one of the questions is, how do you filter through all of this noise and get to the most important things? How do you make sure that you're tracking uh, what really matters? So the fundamental purpose of managing strategy using dashboard software is to help leaders and employees answer some basic questions, such as what is our mission? What is our vision of a successful future? Uh, what is our plan for implementing strategy? Are we making progress at implementing that plan? How do we align 
uh, shared operational goals with our plan. How's that going? And then finally, how do teams and individuals align, prioritize, and get stuff done? You know, so dashboarding software simply enables an organization to connect the dots systematically between all of these things. Uh, people want to know that the work that they're doing is contributing to the organizational organization achieving its desired goals. So how do you go about connecting those dots? Well, at the Balanced Scorecard Institute, we use a framework called the Balanced Scorecard to manage strategy, strategy implementation, strategy execution. Um, you know, but with a dashboarding software, you can really basically use any framework. The, the point is to organize your thoughts in a way that is easily understood by leaders, by employees, managers, all top, top down. Uh, so here's an example of an organization level balance scorecard. Okay, so this one is for a, um, a, a generic city government, but the pieces look roughly the same as, as, as any other. So at the top, you can see the high level mission, vision and strategy for the for the city. Yeah, so this is where they communicate their picture of the future, their, their purpose and the, the three or four high level focus areas of their strategy. Then on the left side of the screen, you can see there that they've they've uh, laid their objectives out over the over four perspectives of the, the, the four balanced scorecard perspectives. So this visual diagram is their strategy map and organizations use that to tell a story about how the, you know, their organization creates value. So I can I can tell a cause and effect you know, relationship. I can, I can highlight the, the relationships uh, between the various objectives in our strategy. So then if all of those elements were for context, in the middle of the screen, you can see measures and targets. You might refer to these as KPIs or, or key performance indicators. So KPIs are used by leaders and managers to understand if the strategy is working. It helps get employees to focus on what's most important. Um, it helps communicate what's, what we're trying to accomplish. So for every objective on the, uh, in your strategy map, you have a measure. For every measure, you've got a target, which is the desired level of performance we're aiming for. Finally, out to the right, you can see the strategic initiatives that the organization is implementing uh, in order to improve performance and hit targets. So this list is created through a prioritization process uh, that's guided by strategy. It's designed to make sure that you're leveraging the ideas that will make the biggest Im improvement. So just by glancing at this picture, I can connect the dots between the various initiatives we're implementing and the measures that we're, we're tracking and the objectives we're ultimately trying to achieve and the high level focus areas that those objectives are connected to. Okay, ultimately trying to achieve our vision. So hopefully every organization that's managing strategy has a framework like this to help them understand what they're trying to accomplish and, and to connect those dots. So this, was, this is what it looks like on a high level. What, let's, let's talk through what it would look like in a day-to-day -day sense. So in a day-to-day -day sense, there's an ongoing cycle of information sharing and reporting that drives decision-making. You know, in the most basic sense, there's first a process of collection, analysis, and reporting. So this is done by the owners of the data. Hopefully it's the owners of the strategic objectives at the strategy level. Um, here we're talking about measures and initiatives at the organization level or at the operational level. Then the, the owners of that strategy and leadership team meet and are to review progress, share reports. Again, this can happen at any level from, the, you know, whether it's the board leadership team all the way down to the operational shop floor level. Uh, but the, the, the basic principles are the same. We're collecting, evaluating, reporting, meeting, and then whatever we meet and discuss, uh, there should be a feedback loop that goes back to the back to the beginning. Uh, hopefully there's there's decisions made. Um, we, we make decisions about about what we're collecting and, 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 and how we're future improvement ideas. So all those plans are updated depending on the results that you're getting. Now, to make that work, you would you need to have some sort of a regular, regularly scheduled conversation about these things. We talked about this this meeting cadence. That's the the word that the that the you know, the consulting word that we're using these days. But it just means your schedule, the schedule that we're going to be following. Uh, so you, this schedule that you you uh, create will have both strategic meetings and operational meetings. 
the strategic meetings, uh, you know, focus on prioritization and performance. You know, how are we moving the organization from point A to point B? Are we achieving our goals? Most organizations have some sort of a long-term planning cycle, but not all of them have an annual refresh or, or quarterly review, which we highly recommend. And then on the operational side, you might have you know, more, more, let's just say more frequent meetings, whether they're weekly or, or monthly or, or even more often than that. Uh, some people have one-on-ones with their supervisor. In the agile world, they have, they have something called huddles, you know, where they, they huddle up at the, in the morning and they, they talk about what issues they're wrestling with. Um, you know, small tactical meetings. Uh, these are meetings that focus on problem solving, removing barriers to action uh, and for quick decision-making. So the exact schedule will vary, um, but one useful model is maybe to have a monthly check-in that marries strategic issues with operational issues, and then more frequent operational meetings that focus on more day-to-day -day issues. So in a little while, Tom will demonstrate how this meeting might look in the dashboard software. Um, but let's look at the agenda on paper for a couple of those meetings and see, you know, make, make sure we have a sense of what we're talking about. So the quarterly strategic review meeting uh, will likely focus on, on the strategy itself, uh, followed by the discussion of the results that you're getting. Okay, and hopefully that, that those reports will focus on, on each ob objective, uh, will focus on the performance measures that, 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 and whether you're hitting targets or not, what kind of results are you getting? It'll focus on the initiatives that you're implementing, what, is the, what are the status of those, and then, any emerging strategic issues should come up. So if we need to adapt on the fly, we will based on, on uh, changes that are going on on the ground. Then you finish with next steps, action items, expect, expected milestones and so forth. So all organizations will adapt this type of, of, of agenda to match their culture and style. You know, but in the abstract, these issues should all be covered. Then the operational meetings will be similar, except that as you shift into operations, sometimes you're not talking about a strategic objective. Um, you know, now you might you might be talking more about an operate a key operational process. So that focus will be specific to the topical area covered. So if you're in manufacturing, you're manufacturing widgets, you'll be discussing that. If you're in HR, you know you you might be talking about recruiting and hiring and so, so on. Uh, but you can see the same sort of pattern. We talk about results. We talk about the actions we're taking, key initiative status, emerging issues. Uh, what are we gonna do next? Milestones, action items, and so forth. Same pattern. Now in all these meetings, we're talking about performance. So before we get any further, we should just review very quickly to make sure that we all are on the same page as to what we mean by a measure or a KPI. Uh, you know, we see a lot of a lot of people come in into our, our, our classes or our strategic planning classes where they show us their KPIs and maybe they're they're not really KPIs. They're, they, they, they list them, they're, they're labeled that way, but maybe they're milestones. Um, you know, we're going to redesign the website uh, by the end of December and we're going to implement a marketing campaign by, by March, you know, that sort of thing. It's very common. Just because they're labeled as KPIs though, is, it does not necessarily mean uh, that that's what we're, what we're aiming for. For us, a KPI or a performance measurement in our, in, the, in our strategic plan should be a critical indicator of progress towards a desirable outcome. So yes, it should be something that's quantifiable. We're counting the number of something, the, the percentage of something, it's the rate of something. The point is, is that I can trend it over time, like, like this picture here where I, I can make the same measurement on a regular basis. It's, we're, we're not talking about an initiative. You know, that, that website redesign I mentioned is not, not an example of a KPI. Uh, that's going to either be done or it's not going to be done. It's more of a, a milestone. Um, again, though, key, one, one of the key words here is that this, this, this is not anything that's quantifiable is not necessarily a KPI. Uh, you can measure this, the, you know, the size of the monitor you're looking at right now, um, but that's not necessarily an indicator. Just because you can turn it into a measurement does not mean it's an indicator of progress of towards, you know, some sort of a goal. Uh, so that's it. So, so we do want to differentiate there. 
All right, so then some more key uh, terms we want to make sure we're all on the same page with is number one, targets. Uh, in other words, when you identify something you're going to start measuring and counting, you want to have you, you have a desired level of performance in mind, hopefully. Uh, we refer to that as the target. Uh, some the software refers to it as a goal sometimes. Um, the point is that you, you want that's that's a, a cr critical part of managing performance. And then you want to have some sort of a an assistance with the fr from the dashboard tool to help you with interpretation. Uh, these colored thresholds uh, can definitely uh, as assist with that. Where you where you say you know anything that's in the green means good performance, anything in the yellow is maybe satisfactory or medium or maybe cautionary, um, and then anything that's in the red you would say as as poor performance. Um, there's there are other ways of doing this. Some some work, some software will use um, icons like a smiley face, uh, but the point is is that to have a, a shorthand way to interpret your performance uh, is is useful because if if you take the colors away, this is just a bunch of numbers. So unless I am intimately familiar with what these numbers mean, um, I, I don't I don't know how to interpret it. All right, it's also helpful to understand that there's different types of measures and that some of them are more operational in nature and some of them are more strategic in nature. So operational uh, measures tend, you know, are tied to, to, to the more what we think of as the ones that are tied, connected to the uh, generic production model or, or logic model. That includes inputs, processes, and outputs. So for each, each everything that we do, you could, you can have measures within these categories. Okay, so for a, um, and for, for every process we spend resources, uh, and that's what we think of as the inputs of our process, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to use an example here of our coffee store. Uh, we're going to come back to this later when um, when Tom does his demonstration, he'll show you an entire coffee store demonstration. Um, but if I'm looking at all the KPIs that my coffee store is tracking, some of them are going to be focusing on the inputs. Uh, the, the cost of the beans or, you know, uh, might be critical, maybe, maybe, um, Maybe there's something about the water or the time that my employees are putting into it. All of that is re referring to what we're investing in um, in the process. You know, maybe maybe the the quality of the bean is critical to to the quality of my coffee, and so that I might have some measurements around those inputs. Then I might look at my measures and say, well, some of them are focusing on process. The process quality, the efficiency, the consistency, maybe it's critical that every time a barista makes coffee, they follow the exact procedure. And if they don't follow that exactly the same way, the coffee is not going to be as good. So I might have a measurement in place that, fat, that tracks that consistency or that the quality. And then from an operational standpoint, what am I producing is a key question. And you know, in my coffee store, obviously I'm producing coffee. So there's, there are all kinds of quality questions or you know, the strength, temperature, timeliness, all these, there, there are all kinds of elements I might be measuring that track uh, the output of my, my production. But then, you know, at the end of the story doesn't end with, with those operations. Ultimately, what I'm trying to achieve are outcomes. I want people to enjoy the coffee. I want them to to buy the coffee. I want to know that they're that I'm making money in my store. Those are all outcomes. So I can, I do have control over what I produce. I am ultimately just trying to influence whether I'm I'm achieving outcomes or not. Uh, so there's a there's a almost a, a distinct line of a distinct difference between the these more operational elements on the le the, the first three buckets, and the more strategic uh, element in the outcome bucket. And those so those families complement each other. Um, and, and I can complement them even further by adding measures of, a, of an entire family of measures. Okay, so I have my operational measures, I've got my strategic measures, I can add to those uh, project measures. Uh, for instance, I, I might have a, a new corporate branding initiative and I might create a measurement or two around that. Uh, I might have employee measures. Maybe the skills of the baristas is, is of particular importance to the quality of my coffee. So I might have some employee measures around those skills. Finally, there might be risk that I need to take into consideration. 
um, you know, maybe um, maybe I'm worried about that that particular type of coffee and the, the availability of that particular bean. Uh, and so I need to have a red flag that that appears in the software to tell me that we have an issue with the bean availability. So. Anyway, the takeaway here is that a family of measures like this can give you a complete picture of performance um, and uh, help you understand if you're making progress. Anyway, like I said, we will come back to the coffee example in a minute with Tom's demo. So another important concept is the difference between leading indicators and lagging indicators. Leading indicators are those that are predictive in nature. They're precursors of future success. And then lagging indicators tell us how we've done in the past. Okay, so uh, the example we like to share is that, you know, maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i an organization that holds smoking secession programs. Our goal is to, what? Reduce the population of, of people that smoke. That's, so I have a leading indicator in that I'm counting the number of programs we hold and I have a lagging indicator that's, that's, that's indicating our apps, our apps, um, our success, um, you know, by driving down the people that smoke. One thing that's very confusing for some folks is that this measure in the middle, the population of smokes is actually a leading indicator as well. So it's a, it's a lagging indicator relative to the number of programs, but it's a leading indicator relative to cancer rates. And so this relativity uh, between the, the possible measures can be confusing for some folks. Uh, but, but the point is, is that, it, so whether it's leading or lagging can be relative based on where, you know, where you're, what you're focusing on. Okay, so let's talk through now some basic strategies for creating useful dashboards and performance visualizations. Uh, years ago, I was working with a client that, that had had software and they were they were showing me their dashboard and I was just astounded by the way they were they had everything organized they had they had entered everything in as ratios the way we we had we had helped them so they had measures like uh, revenue per employee and scrap per employee but the software had a toggle switch on it and oh, when you hit the switch it would move the measures into whatever department. Uh, that, that, that were the, where the counts were happening. And so they, most of the employees there spent most of their time looking at number of employees in HR and the number of dollars in finance uh, without really seeing the connection between the two. And, and the strategic view was, you know, scrap per employee or, or revenue per employee. And so the, just because of the way the software was reshuffling the data, it was not very useful. So that's not what we're aiming for here. For, but the first thing we want to talk about is how we want to make sure we structure all of our reports and the navigation within the system around strategy. So a strategy map, like the picture on the left, should be driven by live data. So when somebody selects an objective, they should see the name of the objective uh, at the top, like, a, like the picture on the right. So they essentially come over here, they click on improve customer satisfaction, and it brings up this... Uh, you know the, the the picture of how we're doing in within that particular objective. So the point is, is that the name of the objective should always be at the top of of any data screen, and they should always be driven by our strategy rather than just a a raw set of performance charts. The way a lot of people uh, like to look at their data. Another important recommendation that we that, that's often missed is that you should always make sure that interpretation and comparison is simple and easy to see at a glance. I always like to borrow this example from Stephen Few's website. Uh, he's a master at this concept and has some great books and uh, online material, but he stresses that you should always avoid three dimensions and, and other distracting effects like on this example. You don't need the grid lines, you don't need the colors, you don't need the three dimensions, all of that just clouds the interpretation. So how, how, you know, how does he improve this? You know, there's two, two improvements that can be made depending on the story you're trying to tell. Uh, this simple bar chart would be ideal if you want to compare resorts within the years. So Hawaiian Beach had about double the, re the, the revenues of, the, of either of the other two for two years. But you know, then in uh, what 1995, the numbers tell a different story. The, the story was, you know, that, um, that trend is completely lost in this first picture or that, that the difference between, you know, from year to year. But then if you want a, a, 
you want to uh, trend performance over time, maybe a, a clean line graph, graph would be better. So you can now see how things go from year to year and how Hawaiian Club is, is trending down and Bahamas Beach is, is trending up. So the, the takeaway is that simple is better, clean, easy to interpret is, is better. Uh, make sure that you, uh, you know what you want to compare. Uh, it, and it's helpful to understand the strengths of these different types of charts as, as you want the visualization to match uh, the intended message. All right, so before I hand things off to Tom, let me just summarize why it is helpful to automate your, your, your reporting processes. Um, you know, there's a lot of benefits here as, as automation makes it easier to make all this happen. It, it enables discipline, it makes it easier to organize your thoughts around strategy, uh, you know, you can connect similar items together. Uh, it should also be all, be faster, uh, it, easier to make make evidence based decisions. Uh, and then finally, I, I think it goes without saying these days that if you want employees to even think about something, you pretty much have to give it to them on on their phone. Uh, it's as simple as that. All right. So before I hand things off to Tom, I just would like to note that if you want to know more about measuring and managing strategy or operations or anything else, me measurement, management, strategy, balance scorecard, any of those kinds of things, uh, please visit one of our websites uh, to learn more about our certification programs. Uh, we offer these programs in association with the George Washington University Center for Excellence in Public Leadership. Uh, we've been, we've offered our programs all of our programs live online since April, and I've been pleasantly surprised at how effective that medium has worked for us. Our net promoter score, our satisfaction scores, all, all of our metrics have crept up slightly since we moved online. So, you know, we're very, very happy with the uh, that transition. All right, Tom, I, uh, I'm ready for a cup of coffee. And we went ahead and named the coffee shop after him. Congratulations, David. Um, what I'm gonna be using today for my entire presentation is a software solution called Spider Impact. And I'm starting with just giving you the screen that you're seeing right now, which is a broad over, overview of, of Spider Impact as a software solution. And I'm gonna be sharing with you four different uh, meeting presentations, all of which were created and designed and organized within Spider Impact. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, and jump into one of them and just get it started. What I'm gonna be using is something of what we, we call them briefings and they're effectively presentation, if you will, presentation decks. So we'll just start with this one and just give, give me a chance to just again, reflect on what, what I'm gonna show you is very much along the lines of what, what David shared with you is the importance of having um, intelligence, actionable insight at all levels. So the idea of, as he alluded to, a quarterly strategic type meeting or a monthly operational check-in meeting or a weekly operational team meeting that he, he called huddles, which I love because I think that summarizes it real well, what, what any manager is trying to do. And then, of course, all the way down to the individual employee reviews. And what you'll see is, is through our solution that you can cover um, strategic performance management at, at all levels within the same solution. Okay, so the, the first meeting that we'll discuss is again the quarterly strategic update. In this case, David, the, the coffee shop owner, is meeting with you know his stakeholders, investors on a quarterly basis. He's going to be leveraging our Spider Impact software solution to facilitate the meeting, drive the the, the overview of performance uh, management, and discuss strategic objectives and initi initiatives that we feel that he feels would be helpful to achieve all of his goals. And really, very importantly, folks, is to establish an environment of collaboration and communication where everyone is able to very dynamically on kind of an ad hoc basis, ask their questions and have discussions and gain the kind of insight and information that they feel they need to make really intelligent decisions about, about the business. So David starts the meeting here with a view of a strategy map. And I'm, I shouldn't make presumptions about what all of you know about balance scorecarding as a methodology or strategy maps um, in general. But with a strategy map like this one, David um, and his you know, managers and investors can easily, very intuitively, interpret the coffee shop's 
strategic both structure in terms of you know perspectives in this case this falls into the classic balanced scorecarding paradigm with your financial your customer and stakeholder internal processes and what have you as well as the color coded ovals that you know based on again what david said with the red yellow green you know red being underperforming yellow being you know middle performance kind of meh, we're doing okay and green of course being you know an overperformance and things are, are going really well so a, a strategy map like this, probably the true value of it is it gives people really insightful one glimpse view of how are we doing. The colors of the bubbles tell how we're doing for a given time period. And if I can just point out in the far upper right corner, this, this, the, all the meetings that we're going to be addressing today are founded around the idea that we're through October of 2020 and we're, we're reviewing performance through October. So at this point, we can very easily see you know, where we're kind of hanging out in the middle performance and where, we're, of course, we're underperforming. Um, and again, the beauty of, of a strategy map like this is we can at any point in time just do a single click on any of these ovals and we immediately dive into the underlying scorecard where we have all the detail information that would help us best understand our performance over time. And when we're in that scorecard, again, very dynamic, ad hoc, uh, visualization change opportunities to say, well, I'd like to see this line graph change, or, you know, I'm more of a names and numbers tabular data sort of person, and I'd like to view it that way. And at any point in time, after that relatively detailed investigation, you can just simply click resume at and get right back into that strategy map and move on to another objective or area of the business. So, it would be very understandable, of course, that you know the David and his investors might want to investigate what's going on with improved facilities. So obviously they can click on that and get a read on the overtime performance of um, you know improving facilities across many different uh, KPIs or measures, which all come together to really define the overall performance of you know facilities management. Again, after investigating that in an ad hoc discussion driven investigative way, you can just click resume at and you're right back onto the, the dashboard. Now, now, David, being the positive guy that he is, would like to really highlight one of the objectives on this dashboard, which is right at the middle at the bottom of reduce turnover. So several months ago, David and the, and the uh, investing team decided that they would invest money into um, increasing the profit sharing plan participation. So what I have just done as I've been talking is I navigated back in time to March of 2020. And you see that in March of 2020, reduced turnover was in a bad way. We, we had a problem. Employees were leaving very quickly and often. And so they decided that they would invest more in a profit sharing program and really promote uh, participation in that program. And you can see that over time, once they got that initiative to get participation in the profit sharing increased, that uh, reduced turnover became improved and improved. And where they sit right now in October, it's great. Everything's green and the trend arrow is up and they're, they're, things are going really well in terms of um, you know, re reduced turnover. It has been greatly improved, okay? So the next thing then after reviewing that that David wants to talk about as the meeting continues is just a quick review of that initiative to drive uh, inclusion and participation in the profit sharing plan. So in this case, I'm just going to adjust my resolution here a little bit. So here's the idea is they, you know, they put out a budget of $20,000. They've only spent a small portion of it, but you can see that they have really succeeded in, you know, uh, progressing on this initiative you can see that what they intended this to do, what it's supposed to drive and improve down here at the bottom is reduce turnover. And over to the right of reduce turnover, we can right here through our solution see lots of details about how this initiative to um, increase you know, profit sharing plan participation has had direct um, improvement on the uh, reduced turnover measure. And that's all right at David's fingertips and people can ask questions and they can discuss when did we start it? Uh, is the due date appropriate still? Do we keep going forward? Look at this, it's great, we're on schedule. So lots of different details are available right here at their fingertips, again, to foster discussion and review. To take it even to another level and say, well, what, what, what about that plan? What did we do? And so you can see here in a nice, you know, Gantt chart sort of view, the presentation of all the different tasks 
steps and milestones that were in integral to the successful implementation of that uh, increasing profit sharing plan performance, as well as you know the, the different tasks and how they, if you will, developed and progressed over time. So David's very happy to be able to share that you know, with his board and his investors. And the thing that really is his favorite slide to share with them here in the month of October is the results of their, of their efforts and his efforts and the manager's efforts, where you can see that the pink line is indicating uh, an any increase in percentage of employees that have participated in the profit sharing plan. And the blue um, columns represent employee turnover. So this really just in a in one quick glimpse brings it all together and allows, you know, David and his investors and his managers to honestly kind of pat, pat themselves on the back and say, this is great. This has really worked out well. So that's something that he's able to share with them. Again, all just through real simple, intuitive, color-coded dashboards with plenty of drill through anywhere you want, color coding all over the place. Um, moving ahead, Next thing that David just wanted to share, you know, again with his investors and, and his management, something they've talked about for a while, is the idea of, of adding an, another store. So they, again, a while back started another project or an initiative to try and secure some investment for an additional, you know, store location. And what they what they talked about, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here, is you know what will help them confidently go to investors is a positive performance around growing customer volume, improving customer satisfaction, increasing cafe revenues. So these again are all related uh, to the same idea of, of another initiative or another project to try and get money to open a co another coffee shop. And a, and a really simple um, uh, dashboard that David is able to share again with his investors and with his managers and really thank his, ma his managers at this point is say, look folks, these are the four things that we, we decided, we talked about that would help us be able to confidently gather additional investment. And they're doing great in all of them. They've increased profitability. They've actually, even though customer satisfaction, you know, during our unfortunate recent, you know, COVID-19 era went down for a while, they're actually now back on a bit of an upswing. So he's again, able to share all of this information with his, again, his investors and his managers at a strategy planning meeting. And again, solicit everyone's input and share with them the success that they have achieved um, to this point. Um, at this point, I'm gonna take a quick pause and a breath and we'll move to another meeting. Um, again, just kind of moving down, if you will, the ladder of the different types of meetings that you know David described earlier. At this point, um, David, the coffee shop owner, <laughs> is going to meet with his assistant managers. And again, this is on a, on a monthly ba uh, basis. You know, David um, talked about cadence, you know, meeting cadence. Might be quarterly, might be monthly, might be, again, weekly team huddles. Um, again, David, the, sh the shop owner, is going to continue to leverage the same Spider Impact software solution to facilitate the meetings and share information. They'll talk about putting initiatives and or projects in place that will help the managers and their baristas achieve, you know, the larger shop goals. And they, of course, can highlight areas of concern for those managers to talk to their baristas or employees about in their weekly meetings. Um, as David showed you earlier, same kind of imaging here. Uh, this is the idea of, of a fairly simple, you know, seven widget, if you will, dashboard, giving you, again, same idea of very intuitive color coding understanding of performance. You see, again, ye yellows and greens at this point. You don't see any reds. But if we were to go again back in time, just to give you an example here, I could go back a couple months and look at that back in July of 2020, our outputs, the very important outputs that David talked about, you know, he talked about inputs, processes, outputs, and outcomes. Well, back in July, we weren't doing too well on outputs. So obviously during the interim, we've put a little time and effort into that and performance has greatly improved. Um, just like we saw earlier, um, David, as he's you know having this meeting with his managers, can can drill into any of the different areas of that dashboard, and again get down into the really the if you will the gory detail, the highly informative, hopefully highly informative and intuitive um, you know review of performance. And after you know they follow the train of thought investigation and have good lively discussion, they can move you know from inputs. Let's go talk about the success that we now see in outputs 
and hopefully reflect and maybe celebrate a little bit about that. Um, and so on. And they, again, of course, down here in the lower left is a reflection of the success of that profit sharing program as well. So this is, again, another example of a dashboard that, again, David is sharing with his managers, not so much his investors, but it gives them a nice vision or view of how they have done, how they're doing currently, and how they have done historically. You can, again, take that same kind of concept and say, well, let's review um, costs and say, let's, let's just move away from in, uh, uh, outcomes and let's talk about processes and part of that, you know, the inputs, if you will, being, being the cost. So this again is just an example of a cost overview dashboard. Um, it's understandable that David and the managers will probably have their attention, if you will, pulled into the speedometers that are in the red. And because of course, you know, when you're really trying to manage, if you will, operational performance um, melded with strategic vision, you need to keep your eyes, of course, on the operational side. And so they could just, again, via a single click, dive down into the, you know, the cost of goods sold and other, you know, uh, cost elements as we've discussed previously. So that's something, again, just another um, example of a dashboard where they may say, okay, we're doing great there. And, you know, with regard to the custodial services, you know, um, thanks again to COVID-19. Unfortunately, the rigors of cleanliness and how, how much time and effort it takes to wipe down a counter after every single transaction, let's say, maybe just, you know, you have to hire more custodial services to do that, whatever it might be. So they can investigate all of the different cost elements with just single clicks and drilling into those details. Um, moving ahead with his discussion with David's discussion with his managers, he wants to get to the all important um, level of customer satisfaction. Um, again, we're, we're continuing to review performance here in October of 2020, but once again, I could go back in time and reflect that in September of 2020, we really had some problems in a couple different areas. We weren't looking too good. Um, and again, at any one of these, we can click on uh, let's say number of Facebook mentions. And we've assigned this as red because the idea is if someone really likes what they're doing, they will give us a Facebook like. If they're mentioning, maybe they're kind of complaining a little bit or expressing something that we should at least be aware of. So let's keep our fingers on the pulse of that. Um, another area that's really important because it's new at the David's coffee shop is this average delivery service rating. So we're just gonna pause here a little bit and David's gonna review with his managers, how are we doing on delivery? And again, I, I don't mean to make this presentation all about COVID-19 or anything, but it is an element in our world. And again, David's coffee shop um, has to adapt. You know, David Wilsey brought up the term adapt a couple of times. So this is a perfect example of where at the coffee shop, they said, okay, people are not coming in. We, we can't even let people in, but we want to get them their coffee, we want to sell them coffee. So they could be doing drive up and or they could now instigate a delivery service, as you see here, that they started only in May of 2020. And you can see that the performance started fairly well, but over time, at least the customer's review of our performance is going down. Now, in terms of communication and collaboration, David can talk with his managers at a meeting like this, but it's also really helpful if through the software solution, people are able to provide um, comments when they have an idea or a thought, or, you know, how can we fix this? Or, you know, like here, I, I mentioned that it's in, in Minnesota, guys, it's snowing. So this is a perfect example of a comment. It's like, wait a minute, you know, some of our delivery is via bike. Uh, what are we going to do when old man winter comes along? So it just gives people an opportunity to communicate and collaborate around the, the data and the information that they're reviewing their performance on. So that's just an example of that. Okay, let's move ahead here. I got to keep this moving ahead. Another thing that David is going to review, um, of course, with his managers is the important, you know, processes. David talked about all the inputs and the outputs and the processes. So this is a, another example of just a dashboard that shows a, a nice broad overview of a lot of different processes that they track at David's Coffee Shop. And again, in terms of adapting, and I already kind of gave you a preview to this, but if I go back in time, you'll notice that way back in um, before, okay, there we go, March, 
uh, before, again, before COVID-19 came and changed our world, the average time for a walk-up order was a measure, but we didn't even have any data for completing a delivery because at that time we didn't offer delivery service at David's Coffee Shop. But as we move ahead over time in April, when we were forced to shutter the doors, there was no walk-up order information. There was no delivery information because we hadn't made the transition at the coffee shop yet. But when we got into June, then we kicked in the delivery service. And look at that. We did great in June and we did great in July. And again, we just don't have data for the walk-up orders because nobody's allowed into the store anymore. So the, the point here that I'm trying to make is that dashboards like this can be very dynamic, very adaptive, to how you need to change your business uh, to just stay successful and, and keep moving forward. Um, all right, let's keep forging ahead. Uh, we talked about this earlier. This is where David is just sharing, you know, his pleasure, his great joy with uh, the managers that he's talking to right now and thanking them for their promotion of the participation in the profit sharing plan, which has led for the coffee shop to a fairly drastic improvement of uh, employee retention, right? We're slowly but surely just keeping people employed because employee turnover is just difficult and it's a hassle for David, the, the coffee shop owner and the managers. Um, and then lastly, David is able to share here a new initiative with his managers, which they had discussed theoretically that you know because people can't walk in anymore, as much as they're handling now some delivery service, it would be cool to have another drive-up lane because the drive-up lane it goes around the block at this point in time. And maybe that's part of why people maybe are not as satisfied as we'd like them to be. So they started an initiative here um, to investigate the idea of creating a new drive-up lane. So this, and it was, it's a new initiative. It started in September. They gave themselves you know, two months to try and just look into it and investigate it and hopefully get it going. And you can see here that they're making great strides in terms of uh, soliciting bids and checking references and getting their choice down to just two vendors to build and add onto the shop this new driver plane. Now, one thing that I would just point out, because I showed you earlier the idea of an impact of an initiative on um, measures or objectives. In this case, you'll notice that, that, that they're hoping to improve the average time for a drive through order, and they're hoping to improve process efficiency, but they don't have the drive plane yet. The initiative is so new, it's not even complete. So they really, at this point, don't have enough data to say positive or negative, red, green, or, or otherwise. We don't know yet. But eventually, these two, this initiative will be able to, you know, impact, hopefully, these, these measures and objectives, and th that will all be visible, again, via a dashboard like this. Okay, so that wraps up David's um, second meeting with his managers. And then now we're gonna move over to those managers taking all the inspiration and information that they've learned from either the original strategy meeting and or the operational meeting slash strategy meeting with David and take it now down to the full operational level where they're gonna meet you know, with their baristas. And as David said, they're gonna huddle up they're going to talk about performance. They're going to implement whatever kind of initiatives the baristas may offer. And again, hopefully make improvements, make adjustments, I should say, to improve performance. And again, these managers want to hear what the baristas have to say. Okay. So at this point in this meeting, the managers, uh, Kevin and Barb, each meet with their own teams. And they talk about the same kind of things that David shared with them as managers. Of obviously, the customer satisfaction overview dashboard is very important. And it gives, again, the managers the opportunity to thank and or address or ask questions about you know, performance over time, improvements, and or reduction in performance as appropriate. It's the exact same dashboard but they're sharing it now with, again, the baristas who are the people that really make the coffee, sh coffee shop run, okay? Those same exact measures, it might be helpful for the baristas to see them not just month to month to month, but over time, let's talk about how our performance is doing across, again, these are the exact same four measures that we just saw on the previous page, uh, previous dashboard, but now you get an overtime 
visual on performance. And again, something that the managers would talk probably to the baristas about is the average delivery service rating, which is of all of them, it's really the only one that's descending, where we seem to be doing a little, just a little bit worse than we were previously. Things like, you know, Yelp ratings is up. Number of Facebook likes is up. Generally speaking, we're doing very well, but, you know, we should address where improvements can be made. Um, forging ahead, again, the managers, again, talk to the baristas about the really the same process information that, again, David shared with them, really the same dashboard, and just make sure at this point that they pause and ask and talk to the employees and say, all right, for instance, what's this delivery time? Let's talk about that. And all they have to do is, is click on it and get a read again of what's happening. And again, at the bottom, notice that people commented on this. Some of the employees were able to comment on this or the managers were able to provide some input to say, this is what I see happening. I have an idea about how we can make some kind of improvement or have a reason why performance is down. And it just really matters. Data is data, but context to the data is gigantically important. Um, okay, and then let's see, I think there's just one more, one more slide on this one. Oh, and this is the one where David, this is where, or this is where the managers, sorry, this is the managers talking to the breeze says, they really just have a minute to, again, keep everything on a positive note is to say, even if we happen to be down at some area of our businesses, that's understandable and we will make adjustments. But overall, this is about the quality of coffee is what this is, coffee quality. And that matters. You know, there are these blind taste test people that'll come through the drive up lane or order in on a delivery and just taste the coffee and then give us a, a rating. You'll notice that they're doing great throughout everything, throughout the whole pandemic and all the problems that went down over the summer, there was a little bit of a dip, but in the last three months, they're knocking it out of the park. So it gives the, the managers, again, the opportunity to talk to their, if you will, their barista team and say, you guys are doing great and we really appreciate it. Keep it up, you know, yay team. Okay, ready, huddle, break for any of you guys that are football fans. Okay, so that's, that's that meeting. And then the, the last meeting that I just want to address here and the last, if you will, level of meeting, you know, that, that David alluded to earlier, and I'll just round it out here, is, is a, just a personal one-on-one -on -one meeting. So, you know, Bill Smith happens to be one of our employees at the coffee shop. He's been around a long time. He's been a valued employee. He, generally speaking, does a good job. But as his manager, you know, Kevin is going to say, hey, you know, Bill, let's just get together. Let's t I'll buy you a coffee. Let's sit down and just review how you're doing and talk about it. And obviously what, what Kevin, the manager, is going to say to Bill is, look, I noticed that you seem to be taking a really long time to make, you know, a, a, co a mocha. You know, what's the deal? Are you going out and like milking the cow for the mocha? What's happening? Why is this taking so long? And then when Bill is responsible for his shift on the delivery, eh, he's not doing so well. So again, all this really fosters is not criticism. It, Bill's not going to get fired because of all this, but you can establish a conversation and Bill can explain what's going on. And Bill might have a really good idea about how to improve the uh, cafe mocha making process that he can then, he, his you know, um, numbers will improve as will everybody else's. And again, if, if, uh, if someone wanted to take a broader or just a slightly different overview of Bill's performance, you know, again, the idea of some people really like pictures, others are just more names and numbers kind of people, you know, something that the manager Kevin could point out to Bill is something that's pretty crystal clear here is that in terms of his efficiency of making coffee, going back to June, he was great. And it's just been a kind of a slow and scary descent here. And again, all that is is just fosters a discussion and a conversation to say, what, what's happening here? How, how can the coffee shop help Bill do his job better? And again, it's all color coded. It's all drillable. We could take a look at the efficiency you know, of, of making coffee by Mr. Bill Smith and say, look, here's what's happening over time, sir. Um, talk to me. You know, what's, what's going on? Um, so that's that. Uh, and really, that's this again. This employee level type meeting can be quite brief, data driven, 
and then that's it. That's the last level of meeting. Um, and at this point, then, um, David Wilsey, if I could uh, welcome you back into the conversation. Um, I'm done with, with my presentation about these dashboards at the coffee shop. I'm just going to share this screen here um, and invite you, David, back in okay. to share any sort of well, wrap-up questions, thoughts, what have you. Um, bef before I do that, I just, again, everyone who's seeing this, just please take note that we obviously each, you know, the Balance Scorecard Institute at kpi.org um, has, you know, a website, of course, available that you can go to to get information from them. We at Spider Strategies would welcome and really appreciate if you were interested in taking a test drive of our software solution that I just showed you, which, again, is called Spider Impact, and that's available at spiderstrategies.com. At that awesome. point, I'll take... I'll take a breath. And uh, David, if, I don't know if, we, if we're going to be opening this up for questions or addressing comments or questions that may have come in. I'll kind of hand it back over to you at this point. Absolutely. We're, we uh, we only have a few more minutes, but we're, we're happy to take a few questions. If you can open the Q&A panel in the Zoom menu and just add your questions there. We had a few come in uh, while while Tom was presenting. Maybe I'll tackle one or two of those while uh, while Tom can sort through the, the ones that are more technical, more, more that focus on the software. Um, so we had one question that says, how can we determine that our measures are, are considered good or bad unless we have a benchmark? Um, so benchmarking gets at this idea that we're going to look out into the world and find a similar organization uh, that's doing a similar activity and we're gonna use them for comparison purposes. And maybe, maybe we're gonna base our targets within our, our KPI system based on how they're performing. Maybe I can find somebody who's really good at this. And that is a, a valid way of getting at some an interesting target. Uh, but it's not the only way. There are some cases where you can uh, set up, establish your baseline, uh, measure your progress for a while, uh, and, and, and see how you're performing, and then using a conversation around strategy, around what you're trying to accomplish, set a target based on where you want the organization to, to be. Okay, so that's a great question. You, you might also be using uh, customer input. You know, maybe your customers can tell you more about what, they're, what they expect. Uh, so there's, there's lots of different ways uh, to get to a, a, a good target. Uh, we had another question from Shane, and he had sort of elements that that uh, Tom can tackle on the software side, but he's also he also asked a, a really good question about um, you know basically how feasible is all this? Boy, it, it looks like your <laughs> your employees you're trying you, you want them to serve their customers, and yet you're also tracking all this data. How how realistic is that um, that we're going to be tracking? Uh, you know how fast it takes for me to create a mocha? Um, is that realistic? Uh, and, I, and that's that's a legitimate question. I think that when we do these demos, sometimes you know we 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 uh, create scenarios that that you know for for demonstration demonstration purposes that uh, might not be feasible for everybody. But I will tell you that you know a company like Starbucks can do a lot of that. You know, you have a a, a sophisticated uh, checkout you know, register process that when the order goes in, it, it gets counted. When the order goes out, it gets counted. When something gets delivered, the del delivery person hits something on their phone. Uh, you know, so there, is, there are ways to do that. But if you're just getting started at this, uh, maybe you're a small organization, I would definitely recommend that you keep things simple and, and, and make sure as you're you're uh, generating as you're thinking through what you're going to measure make sure that the feasibility is part of the conversation gosh we're not going to have a you know a, a multi-million dollar system to help us track these things and so therefore we're going to measure it a, a different way and so articulate what you're trying to accomplish say here are our goal here's our objectives here's our goal uh, here's what good looks like. How can we track that? There's almost always a, a simple way to get at uh, a, to a measurable performance. So Tom, uh, he was also asking about how, how is the data input linked to the dashboard? You want, do you want to tell yeah. briefly how you connect well, systems? Yeah, well, there's a couple, there's a couple questions that I see here that I, I could try to address all in one fell, I would try, you know, so there's another question here about how can we integrate with the ERB, I'm, I don't know if that's intentionally a B or if that's supposed to be a P, like enterprise resource um, system, but um, 
integration can be done in a variety of ways and under certain ERP systems and under certain even like retail tracking systems that you just alluded to, David. There are obviously behind the scenes are databases. Our solution can directly connect to some databases. If we don't have a direct connector, there's a middle uh, way to get just data out of that ERP system or that retail tracking system or whatever it might be, get it into something as simple as an Excel file, and then Spider Impact can, can connect directly to that to get it in really seamlessly without needing people to be manually cranking in, in numbers. So that's, there's a, it's, it's the kind of thing that we would need to talk about details about what ERP system or what, again, retail system or what have you, are you trying to connect to? But we've got really strong answers on that. Mm -hmm. um, the other question here about, can I explain how the software determines the score number? And again, I see that we're at the top of the hour, so I'll just to do this super quick, is no matter what type of measure you're tracking, it could be a dollar-based thing, it could be a units-based thing, it could be a percentage-based measure or KPI, they all get translated to a normalized zero to 10 scoring spectrum and then you get to pick how you're going to take that zero to 10, if you will, spectrum, and I'm going to say carve it up or create, um, you know, a buckets within it. So a red bucket, a yellow bucket, a green bucket based on your defined thresholds for that one particular, whether it be a dollar based measure or a units based measure, or what have you, you have total control. But the whole idea is we're trying to bring all these diverse measures onto one common playing field um, so that they so that you can really have a nice broad overview perspective of how you're performing even though you have extremely diverse let's say sales in the millions and customer churn in the tens you want to be able to understand red green and yellow uh, for both of those and then as an organization when you kind of if you will bring them together and say how are we really doing as a big company that, again, normalized score of zero to 10 and the common playing field that it empowers is really helpful. I don't know if that answers the question, but that's my, that's my two minute shot at it. Very good. I, you know, and, and like I said, we are we are about out of time. I will note that we did make note of the audio issue I was having earlier, so I will go back and re-record my audio on the first few slides before we post the recording. Everybody will get an email with the recording link within you know within a couple of days. It'll, it takes us a little while to process that. Um, if we don't get to your question, please reach out to us directly uh, there are, are, through the websites, either of the on, on either side, and we will be happy to uh, schedule a conversation to talk through whatever you're wrestling with. I do see a question in the chat feature about, about the difference between operational KPIs and strategic level KPIs. You know, frankly, strategic uh, measures are, are the ones that are that get at whether you're implementing your strategy. That's the simple way to capture it. But it's the ones that that indicate that we're moving the organization forward. We're changing something. We're we're um, the, the world is moving in a different direction, and we are moving with it. That's that uh, we want to measure things that that make sure that we're we're making progress. We're continuously improving, as opposed to just those day-to-day -day operational elements, like are we producing more widgets uh, faster, cheaper, and you know, so, so the the the, uh, the more day-to-day -day things uh, tend to be more operational. But they're they're both important. You do have to do you have to keep an eye on both, and so that's why it's helpful to have a system that connects the dots between those various elements. All right, maybe one more question. Do you have any others, Tom? Uh uh, well, I sorry, I, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm looking at here. When I'm looking at the Q&A, do you guys see what I'm looking at or not? I don't think that the I'm participants here. can see them now. Okay, very good. I'm just trying to, there, there are several questions in here. I'm just trying to pick one or two that I could maybe actually answer quickly. Um, someone asked about what size company do we ta do target for spider software? Any size, big, small international conglomerates all the way down to uh, fishing net repair guys, um, mm -hmm. any size company. Um, and then that works the same way on the balance scorecard side as well. We've worked with, yeah. we, we had an office of seven employees once who developed a balance scorecard to measure their performance and improve their strategy yeah. focus. And, and then we've worked with massive, massive organizations as well, at the other extreme. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, and then just one other question. There's a question here from Bernard. How often should you change or update a target? That's uh, Bernard. That's you'd have to tell me how often your business changes. Um, some businesses are able to define targets or thresholds and just have them stand for years. Others have to address seasonal uh, differences, and you can adjust those. You know, over through a calendar year. Let's say if you're selling Christmas trees, you don't expect to sell too many in August, but you're going to have high expectations come November and December. So um, they, they are malleable about that. And it's really going to be defined by the type of business that you're working with. Right. And that, that really gets at that, that cadence I was talking about. Usually, usually organizations yeah. are meeting, you know, on a quarterly basis, at least where they're talking through whether they're achieving what they want to achieve and they adapt those, those targets in those meetings. If they, if, if it's appropriate, you know, you don't want to, you don't want necessarily to have people doing that in the background all the time, but all right. right. Well, I think, um, we're out of time. We're, we're, we went over a little bit on the time. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, thank you all very much for attending. We, we greatly appreciate it. And we, again, we hope, hope to see you again at, at, one, of our, at, a, at a, one of our other upcoming webinars. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate the time.